All right. Hey, what's going on, guys? Best pro wrestling commentary. We have a cameo appearance by the man, Larry the Manly Stanley. <laughs> what's up, best pro commentary audience? So that's just a nickname I just gave you. If you don't like it, you can throw it right back. <laughs> I like it. Love it. So Larry came by. He has this beautiful antique shop where they have just all kinds of items. You need to check it out, and I'll let him plug that in a minute. But I wanted to show this Kevin Von Eric family wrestling portrait that I purchased from him. So all kinds of stuff you can find. Check out Larry's stuff. I'll go ahead and let you explain to them where they can find memorabilia like that. And yeah, antiques. man. Uh, Waxahachie, Texas, downtown. My father's house. It's uh, 807 Roger Street, downtown Waxahachie. Beautiful shop. It's uh, We're in booth 817, but there's a bunch of different vendors there, so you got a good variety of stuff. And I found that this weekend in uh, Quinlan, Texas. I go searching for stuff, put it there, so it's easy for you to find. But uh, you're not going to find a lot of Von Eric stuff around. And so <laughs> I found uh, two pieces this weekend. So Raymond's lucky enough to grab one here. So this is actually one of the fans that they used to sell at the Sportatorium and at some of their uh, indie promotions and whatnot. So this, I'm going to have to box up or frame or something. Did you ever go to the Sportatorium? No, I think I was a little bit too young for that. But... I was I was real little, like four and five. But what they used to do, there was no AC in there. So in the summer, it would be brutal. as an aluminum building. So they would hand those out to you as you walked in, and you could fan yourself. And that one right there has Kerry, Kevin, and Lance, the, the really unpopular Von Eric. They got kicked <laughs> out of the Von Eric, so it wasn't really Von Eric. But uh, that's probably from around 87, because it was after 86, 87. It was after Mike died. Oh, okay. Piece, so. well, I was born in 83, so I was probably like three or four. Or yeah, like so that's where that came from. My dad used to go down there, and that's the thing. See, the Sport 20 was in Texas, Dallas, Texas, to be exact. So it gets really hot, so this makes a lot of sense. And if you don't remember the Von Erics, they were bigger than the Cowboys in the early 80s. I was a kid, it was Von Erics A, Cowboys B, you know, so. Oh yeah, and I'm pretty sure on the WWE Network they have some stuff, some footage on them, so learn your lineage and your history there. So Larry, before we get into some of your film projects, I know um, last time we had you talking about some of your films, I'm eager to know what, what, what's your input on the WWE payback you know, what's your review on it? What would you say? What'd you like? What you what didn't you like? I love payback. I love payback. I hated Raw last night because payback is now going to be extreme rules. We're getting the same exact card again. I hate it when they do that and they don't mix it up. You yeah. know, um, creative. You should have let. I mean, wait a month. I mean, you know, you want an extreme rules match with Roman and AJ. Push it a month out and give us something else. I mean, put money in the bank here, but AJ win money in the bank and then extreme rules. You Some know. suspense, you know. Yeah. Drag I the storyline a little bit. Make it make sense. Yeah, exactly. So we got AJ and Roman again. We got Natalia and Charlotte again. We got, uh, I mean, at least the New Day's going against the five billions, but I mean, yeah. it's pretty much the same card. It's not, I'm not looking forward to extreme rules. It's like the same pay per view. It's almost like the corporate company says, hey, we know with this formula we're going to get a certain amount of ratings. Let's just do it again. Next month. That's ridiculous. People are getting tired of that. It is, and it's went on for years and years, and I thought Shane O'Max must have changed this. Come on, Shane. So you brought up the Vaude Villains, and obviously they hurt Enzo Amore. What do you think about That was a nasty spill that he took. I don't know if that was on Enzo or the Vaude Villains. I've watched it trying to decide. I think that was more on Enzo not getting down in time. I Because mean, he let go uh, of him in plenty of time. It looked like Enzo may have lost his footing right there at the last minute. Okay. Um, so I think that was really on Enzo. But it's a shame because Enzo is one of my new favorite guys. I mean, I love yeah. Enzo when he comes out there. He's got that charisma and you can't teach that. <laughs> <laughs> and, so. and that's true. He has that X, fact, that X factor that Roman Reigns does not have. So... Did you agree with Roman retaining the title? I didn't, but they gave us just enough. I mean, it looked like AJ won twice. I'm like, that's how they're going to get out of this. They're going to let AJ win by disqualification. And then after Shane or Stephanie came out first, or Shane came out first, I was like, oh, okay. Then Stephanie came out. I was like, okay, this is how they're going to do it. I kind of figured the way it was going, but gave us just enough to think AJ was going to win. Yeah. And uh, I think he's got a shot at extreme rules, man. I hope they put it on AJ and let him run because... Yeah, I need to. You can't say Roman Reigns now because now it's a bit to boo him. So I, yeah. anytime you see him, you can't recover from that. And it's a bit to boo Roman Reigns. Uh, so you need to take the title off, hide him a little bit, push him down, and then bring him back up. I mean, I like Roman Reigns, but it's just he's not gonna he's not gonna get over like he is now. I think he lacks passion. That's what I think. I think he's too big headed and he lacks passion. But yes, he is. A, he's a, he's a great character. Right now would be the time to turn him heel. But would you say that they're using the John Cena formula where they're People hate him, so now he's becoming the New York Yankees. Like they use that, you know, metaphor with John Cena that they're thinking. Well, either way, it's a reaction. I think it's apples and oranges. Cena is likable. Roman Reigns is not. You know, there's a big difference That's there. True. Cena's got true. a likable personality. Roman Reigns does not. What they should do with Roman Reigns, and I don't see him doing this, is they need to call Paul Heyman, put him with Roman Reigns, 
or some other mouthpiece. Get a mouthpiece for Roman Reigns. Tell Reigns to shut up unless he's going to say, I'm going to kick your ass, and yeah. then leave it at that. You know, that's, that's true. And like I said, take him all the way down the bottom, hide him, fake an injury, get him off TV for a while. Oh, yeah. And have him come back, something. But you got, you, unless you want him booed, I mean, because if you want him booed, you're doing the exact right thing. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So let me see. Um, recently, today, actually, I was looking online on the articles, and Ryback got released. Well, I don't know if he was released or he's just suspended indefinitely because there was some contract negotiation issues. Who cares? He's been uh, <laughs> he's been grabbing since WrestleMania. I don't know if you saw this, but at WrestleMania, he was upset because he was on the undercard. They put him on the undercard yeah. again at Payback. And so, I don't know. Ryback's always been a uh, underachiever, in my opinion. And he, yeah, just doing enough. Yeah, just doing enough. So, I mean, he can go right in TNA and I won't miss him at all. <laughs> so, there you go. You know, what I think is it's, it's just karma because I know he was trying to bash CM Punk when CM Punk said that, you know, Ryback's a dummy and he injures people. Yeah. And I feel like maybe at that time Ryback was trying to be a company man. Well, apparently you're not a company man, Ryback, so it sounds like you're going to go to TNA. When WWE purchased TNA, you'll probably get released twice. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you'll wind up in Ring of Honor or on uh, <laughs> something like that. So, so what's going on with uh, Preston? It's my dog, my protector. <laughs> so what's going on in the film world, Larry? I, I know you got some uh, projects work you've been working on. Yeah, I mean, everything's slow. Proud Souls is about to come out, so that's exciting. It's about to get distributed. Uh, Gray Agenda is still in post. Aliens. Uh, yeah. Uh, Decisions is on YouTube and, An and Innocent Hell and Mr. Happy Pants both on Amazon. So there you go. Outstanding. So uh, let, let everybody know how they can follow you on Twitter or Facebook or whatnot. Oh, uh, just Facebook. Larry Stanley at Hotmail.com. Twitter, it's at Big Bad Blair. And I forgot one. The Gospel of Thomas, which my man Raymond was the DP on, Shreveport, Louisiana. That one's on YouTube, too. If you want a good faith based film, go look that one up. Oh, and also on that film, um, there's a young man who, who was on The Walking Dead, and he was in The Gospel of Thomas. No, he was in Proud Souls. He was in Proud Souls. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. I get confused. <laughs> the sci-fi. Yeah. Anyway, check that out on the IDMB page. And Larry Stanley, always love to have you whenever you want to cameo a show. Check out his antique shop. Check out his films. And for best pro wrestling commentary, I am Roman Pierce. We shall see you soon. Thanks for having me, Roman.